want to talk about your important role in supporting your children's math education. One of the best predictors of student success, bar none, is parental involvement. What you do and what you say encourages learning more than any other factor. Whether you're driving in the car, walking at the park, at the kitchen table, the dining room table, wherever you may happen to be, you can be the most important support by sitting down and talking math with your kids. Not doing it for them, but talking about it, asking them to teach you the new math. You were talking about the new math that we have in classrooms today. So get them to teach you. By doing that, they're talking, by talking, they're making that concrete in their brain and they are reinforcing it. Children learn by imitation. So what you say, how you say it, what your reactions are, your body language, especially around math, has an enormous amount of importance. Have you ever felt that the math is changing more than you're able to keep up with? and that when the homework comes home, it is a time of stress and a little time of anxiety. I want to reassure you that that's completely normal. Math has changed enormously in the past 50 years. And what we want to do is make sure that if a child is experiencing difficulty, we catch that as early as we possibly can. Everything that you have is there, and everything that you need is within you. Just being positive, just encouraging them to have a math mindset, telling them that it's okay to make mistakes because we learn from mistakes. The child who believes that the good marks are not related to just being smart, are related to effort, are related to hard work, perseverance and learning from mistakes, those are the children that succeed. As a teacher, I use my hands a lot when I'm teaching. So I'll talk about triangles, I'll talk about squares, I'll talk about the circumference of a tree as something that I can hug the tree. I use my hands a lot. Guess what? Research has shown that children who see other adults using their hands to do that kind of thing form stronger mental images and they'll actually trace out those shapes on their desks. What place in your house is actually the best spot for your child to come home and do their homework? It's wherever you are so that you can have that conversation with them as they're doing the work. We want to try to have homework time be the same time, if we can, every day. So that there is a schedule, there is an expectation, so that there is a routine for it. And basically your child should be doing about five minutes per grade per night for homework. And they should be reading individually every day for homework. So homework time should be something that's positive. If you see that your child is becoming frustrated or you see that they're getting a little bit discouraged, it's important to stop, to ask them what the problem seems to be, get them to talk to you again. Don't dive in there over the shoulders with the pen, but just listen to them and talk to them about all the things they can do. What we all have in our house is a junk drawer. How many of you have a junk drawer in your kitchen? <laughs> guilty, guilty, guilty. What we want to do is take that junk drawer and turn it into a homework drawer. Take all that stuff that you never use and just go out and together plan what you need for a homework drawer. You need a stapler, you need a ruler, you need some markers and pencils and erasers. I think the most important thing for us tonight is for you to have the opportunity to ask the questions about the things that are causing confusion for you or causing concern. You've mentioned about tutors. Can you just give me some more recommendations about tutoring? We know that children often will learn better from other children. They talk the same language, they're interested in the same things, and usually younger children 
look up to and want to emulate students that are a few years older than they are. So by having someone who's in your neighborhood, who knows your kids, who can sit with them and give them that one-on-one -on -one time, that works really well. Word problems, they, they seem to be more and more frequent and I'm just wondering if there's any possibility that they're being offered maybe at too young an age and maybe they require a bit higher level thinking and are they contributing to the frustration in kids with mathematics at all? Most of the kinds of jobs that require just a skill level at the basics will no longer be there when our children graduate from school. So word problems are one way of helping to develop those higher order thinking skills where we're actually analyzing a problem, where, where we're actually hypothesizing what the answer may be, where we're testing to see if it makes sense and if we are actually creating some solutions to those problems. Are there any remedial programs in uh, math as there are in language? There are very, very well-known sequences through which children have to move. And that developmental path is very important. So oftentimes what we try to do with a learning specialist who has a great deal of knowledge about how math develops in children, they will actually do a number of exercises to find out if, in fact, one of those developmental stages has been skipped over or whether there is a barrier at one of those developmental stages and milestones. Can we go back and help with that? Yes, we can. Thank you. I'd like to leave you with just these few thoughts. You are your child's math coach. You have the skills, you have the strategies, you have the positive attitude, and you have the knowledge to be able to empower your child to be successful in mathematics, to be successful in terms of choices, of courses, and careers, and to be successful and happy in life. <laughs>